Bishop Mari Emanuel, who is a bishop in the Assyrian Orthodox Church, was attacked during Holy Mass, during the Holy Korbana. I think that's what they call it in the Assyrian Church. It's the Eucharist. And I've been watching Bishop, I got to say, I've been watching Bishop Mari Emanuel for several months. I saw him on the Paul Bet David PBD podcast, which my wife and I watch. I've watched some of his videos on Islam, on the pokey poke uh, medical crisis of the last few years. And he's, he's very charismatic. He's very sharp. He's very passionate. You know, as a Catholic, I got to say, I really wish our bishops had this zeal, this fervor. Here's what happened yesterday. You can see he's there the cross, and this Muslim man walks up and just starts stabbing him. Now, the good news here, and this is a miracle, praise be Jesus Christ. The Muslim man, by the way, he does shout out Allahu Akbar, whatever they whatever they say, but his, his switchblade did not come out. So he's, he's coming after him, and by a miracle of God, it, um, he got hit, but he didn't get stabbed. Seeing a note here that perhaps you can't see this, so I'm going to go over to the, the comments here. Can you all see the video? Let me know if you can see this video. It's saying it's not showing to you, but I think it is showing to you. One thing I want to notice here, I think this is going to sadly increase as we see more and more friction between uh, the followers of Muhammad and the followers of Christ. When this starts to happen, look how violent this is. Look at all the men running up. And there's even... I think a grandmother, so here he comes in his hoodie. There's even, all the men come up. There's even a grandma, there's a woman here in a veil. I mean, people are coming up. Are y'all seeing the video? Yes, they're seeing it. It's terrible. It's very terrible. Katie did says, I saw a video of Bishop Mari last week in which he said Islam is spread by the sword. Then come, then someone comes along to prove his point. Sadly, Yes. Sadly, yes. I'm going to take your comments and your questions today. And a lot of people that I've talked to about this and shared this with, I assumed a lot of people knew who Bishop Mari Emanuel is, and a lot of them do not. So he is a bishop in the Assyrian Orthodox Church. The Assyrian Orthodox Church broke off the Catholic Church over the Nestorian crisis. Nestorius was a bishop. He was a heresiarch. And he objected to the title of the Blessed Virgin Mary as Theotokos, which means birther or bearer of God, mother of God. That's how it's usually translated into English. The controversy at the time, the Catholic Church, that is Rome, Constantinople, Jerusalem, they said that although the Blessed Virgin Mary did not give birth to the Father and to the Holy Spirit or to the divine essence, she did give, give birth to the divine person, Jesus Christ. And since she gave birth to the Son of God, who was a divine person, it is orthodox, it is right, it is devotional to call her Theotokos, the bearer of God. That is mainstream Christianity, most Protestants follow it. There are some that don't, but that's orthodoxy, going back to the Council of Ephesus and the Council of Chalcedon. That Assyrian church, which goes, extends to what we know as Iraq, all the way into Persia, which we know as Iran, even all the way into China. The Nestorian church went all the way into China. There were Nestorian Christians in the court of Genghis Khan and the Khans. I know you heard me say Genghis. I learned a few years ago, you're, nowadays you're supposed to say Genghis and not Genghis Khan. I don't know. Yeah, all the way out into the court of the Khans, you had an Astorian Christian. So Bishop Mari Emanuel derives from that schism. All right, now here's a, here is a clip 
of Bishop Mari. And I, I kind of just want to show this. I hope Paul Bet David doesn't mind because I think it shows a lot of the, the zeal and who Bishop Mari Emmanuel is. So let me share here. And I'm hoping the sound comes through. Let's just hope the sound comes through. And let me know if the sound doesn't come through. All right, here it is. Sounds not coming through. I know that. Nope, it's not coming through. Drats. This is a really good video. I got volume all the way up. And I'm not hearing the sound. Are y'all hearing the sound? It's a really good video queued up. And uh, unfortunately, I would encourage you to watch this. It's on the PBD podcast, Paul Bet David. It's on YouTube. And the title of the video, yeah, no sound. I'm sorry about that. Lately, it used to be that the sound always went through. And I've noticed since I updated and improved the software, the improvement no longer includes the sound. So this is a classic case of technology getting better for us, but it's not actually better for us. I'm going to go to questions and comments. And uh, I am going to show you also the... Um, the attack once again. KCR just now coming in late. Here it is. A little bit off here. Here we go. Question is, what would you do if this happens next Sunday? Are you going to run to the bathroom and call 911? Are you going to come forward and protect what are you going to do? And then I think a second question is, you know, one of the reasons why this, uh, the, the attacker, by the way, explicitly stated that the reason he came up and attacked Bishop Mari Emanuel is because Bishop Mari Emanuel is probably the number one YouTuber doing Christian apologetics against Islam and against the Quran. So right now, if you go on, and I've watched many of his videos, if you go on and, you you know, arguments against Muslims, Islam, whatever, you're going to find Bishop Mari Emmanuel. So the followers, the disciples of Muhammad are very much aware that this leading voice against the claims of the Quran in favor of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, are being led by Bishop Mari Emmanuel. Also, Bishop Mari Emmanuel is very vocal about the LMNOP, debate. That's a euphemism. He's also very vocal about the hyped up medical, pharmaceutical pokey pokes that have been promoted for the past, since 2000, since certain medical crisis. So he's, he's very vocal on a lot of hot topic issues. And although I see him as an historian, although I see him in schism with the Catholic Church, I can't help, all right, I'm just going to be honest with you, I can't help but to wish that we had more, and we do have some, but we had more Catholic bishops or a Catholic pope who was out there preaching, teaching, like previous popes and previous bishops on these pressing topics of our time. So that's the two topics for Q&A. I'm going to go into Q&A now. Uh, first off, do you wish we had more bishops like this? And then secondly, what would you do in a scenario and in a situation like that? And maybe we Christians need to be rethinking how we organize and protect our churches, our bishops, our pastors, our deacons, our religious, our nuns, our children, our women, and even our men in church. How do we do that? All right, going over to your comments and questions. Let's do this. 
Logan Misiak says, is he in the, he's a Nestorian question mark. Yes, I believe he is. The Assyrian Orthodox Church of the East is historically Nestorian. And I explained earlier what that meant. All right. The Pokey Poke name is funny. You know, we do do what we do. Benjamin, do Roman Catholics do chrismation? Yes, we do chrismation. It's po post-baptismal chrismation is a separate sacrament for us, and we call it the sacrament of confirmation. And it is the application of sacred chrism or myrrh upon the forehead, sealing the baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost for the plenitude, the fullness of the Holy Ghost imparted to the person. Was the attacker a Muslim? Yes, it is confirmed. And he yelled, Allahu Akbar, when he started stabbing the bishop. So, yes. All right. Uh, I'm curious. I haven't seen anyone yet in the comments or the questions say, what would you do? What would you do? If this happened dur during Mass, you're there Sunday morning, a man just walks down the center aisle and just Norman Bates, you know, just crazy. Just crazy attacking. We just lost the Facebook stream, I'm sorry to say. So everybody watching on Facebook, we just lost you. Maybe it's the topic. I don't know. Maybe it's the topic. Um, Jose says, does Bishop Emmanuel have valid holy orders? It is my understanding that the Catholic Church recognizes the sacrament of holy orders, bishop, priest, deacon, subdeacon, downward. Yes, in the Assyrian Orthodox Church. So when they come into union with Rome, they don't have to be reordained, reconsecrated. They are valid. What would you guys do? I'm actually surprised that no one in the live chat so far is saying, if this happened at my church, this is what we would do. Uh, here's one. Tara said, Tara Benoit, I would definitely intervene. Yes, but how? How would we intervene? What would we do? Um, some person implies that maybe intervening would be a sin, but we have to understand that in the Catholic teaching, if you're defending the life of another person and you have to use violence, it's not a sin, right? As long as it's commensurate, right? Like if someone is, you know, pushing someone onto the ground, you can't shoot them five times with a shotgun, right? But if someone is firing into a crowd, right, and you have to use violence to stop that, even fatal violence, the church allows for that, right? God allows for that. You see it in the Old Testament. You see it in the New Testament. And if you're wondering about New Testament, the Apocalypse, the book of the Apocalypse. So intervention here is completely fine. And yeah, if something like that, let's just say someone came in and was just doing something murderous to the priest, you could come in and use violence to help him in that moment. And it wouldn't be a sin. It wouldn't be a sin. Um, Lemmy says, this is why we must learn martial arts. I agree. I think every man at some point in his life should learn boxing and some martial arts. So much, so just so that you don't get into the Eastern mystical um, religious element of martial arts. And some of the martial arts do, and some of them don't. I've practiced for years Brazilian jiu-jitsu. All of our professors, all of our coaches at the highest level that I've trained with were all Catholic. Some practicing, some nominal, but it's from Brazil. So it's a lot of Catholic leadership. We had even had a statue of Jesus in our um, gym 
where we practice Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I am, a, just for you if you're wondering, I'm a two-stripe purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, yeah, you need to learn basics of how to handle yourself and to handle other people in those situations. Have I ever had to use it? No. Here is a super chat, Kong Strong. We wouldn't need to protect our churches if we didn't let in these Muslims into our country. Why doesn't the church speak out against this? Look what's happening in Europe, Islamization. Um, I'm going to gently disagree with that because even if you're in a perf if you're in a Christian nation, there still is the chance of violence happening in churches. This is why even in medieval Europe, you had what's called a verger. And a verger was a man at the beginning of the procession, either outside or in churches, and he carried a big stick. That was called a verge. It's from Latin. It means stick. And he carried the verge, and if things started getting out of hand or people started rushing in on the clergy or the bishop or priest or anything like that, he would use the stick to either move them away or whack them a little bit on the head. Hey, prod them. What? Look out. Here comes the bishop, the priest. So even in Christians, and we got rid of that. I don't know why we got rid of that. I think we should go back, go back to that. But even in Christian societies, we still had the idea of an armed escort for the clergy. I don't understand why we moved into a more secular, less Christian society. We decided we don't need that anymore. So you heard it here on the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast. You need to have vergers. Bring back the vergers. We're on the verge of a reversion to the vergers. In case you're wondering how to spell that, I'll put it on the screen for you. Let's do that. Hmm? Vergers. There it is. Vergers. Let's get some vergers. All right. Some more comments and questions. And before I do, just want to say that if you want to learn about church history, all right, you want to learn about what the Nestorian heresy is, how Pope Leo the Great wrote and fought against it, how the Council of Chalcedon happened, the various heresies and schisms in the church, the first seven ecumenical councils, all the ecumenical councils, I would encourage you to sign up at, oh, this is the wrong screen. Here, I can fix it. Sign up at the New St. Thomas Institute. This is where I teach online courses, and we have a whole course that I teach on the church fathers, and we have another course on medieval theology. So you can earn your certificate in church fathers, and then you can earn a second certificate in medieval theology. And I guide you through all these councils, all these heresies, and the saints and the heretics who battled all this out in church history. So you can sign up today. We have spring enrollment at nsti.com. That stands for New St. Thomas Institute. And I've been teaching courses there for over 10 years. And we have lots and lots of happy students. So if you want to take your faith to the next level, if you want to learn about what's a heresy, what's Catholic orthodoxy, and how all that got shaken down over the last 2,000 years, but especially in the first 700 years of the church, I'd encourage you to go over to New St. Thomas Institute, nsti.com, and sign up as a student today. All right, back to your comments and your questions. Do you think we should have vergers? What would you do? And would you like to see some Catholic bishops getting vocal about these things? You know, like, for example, Bishop Barron has a huge platform. He's vocal about many things, many things that are good. But what about being vocal about p -fizzer? I'm mispronouncing that, but you know what I'm saying. Or being vocal about Islamic takeover of certain cities in Europe. Go to Paris. Go to London. It's completely different 
than what it was like when I went there in the 1990s. I mean, what 25 years has done to places like Paris and London, it's amazing. And what you're seeing is, is over time you had Catholicism, then you have shades of Protestantism, then you have shades of secularism. And now you're starting to see, because of the influx of new peoples, you're starting to see the mosques. The call to prayer five times a day, blasting, the burqas, all that's happening. But if Europe turns her back on Jesus Christ, that creates a vacuum. And Satan is going to fill that vacuum. But where are the bishops in Europe talking about this? Why aren't they talking about birth rates? Why aren't they talking about mass attendance? Instead, they're talking about, you know, the synod on synodality. And can we bless these couples? And can we get more immigration into these cities? Instead of talking about our identity as followers and disciples of Jesus Christ. To me, that's sad. It's sad. Is it sad to you? Uh, here is someone from Munich. I've seen, unfortunately, the same things happening in Munich for the last 10 years. And Munich is such a beautiful Catholic city. It's so amazing. I love Munich. It, it Munich, not all German cities have kind of a Catholic feel to them, but Munich does. So it's sad to hear that. Thanks for sharing that comment. Uh, Thol says, the monster who attacked the poor bishop looked like the devil. But here's the thing, Thol. It wasn't the devil. It was a human. It was a man. The devil may have inspired him. The devil may have tempted him. But it was a human with a free will who decided, planned, premeditated that he was going to go to this church in Sydney, wait for the right time when the bishop was on the pulpit, accessible, walk down, pull out his weapon, device, and go after him. A human with a free will made that. And I want us to be careful here. A lot of times you're like, a, he's a demon. A demon did that. Whole, demons are ultimately our enemy, right? They are the ones who are creating these plots, these persecutions. But they have to get humans in on the plan. You know, we can't just be the devil made me do it. There's free will. Uh, here is a good comment here because I looked into it this morning. It's from Perucho. Perucho, be careful. That bishop has been defrocked. Is he really affiliated with any canonical church? So, Bishop Mari Emanuel, who was attacked, he was a bishop in the Assyrian Orthodox Church, the Nestorian uh, sect, right? But he was put under canonical discipline, and I don't know to what extent that canonical discipline is, if he's fully defrocked or laicized. doesn't seem so. He seems to have a church. He's wearing his bishop uh, gear that's appropriate, I assume, to the Assyrian Orthodox Church. But yeah, he has been under discipline, and I think it was for his preaching regarding the pokey poke beginning in 2020 through 2023, but I'm not sure. So yeah, I know he is under some canonical discipline. And if maybe someone in the live chat could let us know and share that, that would be great. Michael Dorsey says, my guess is that monster, in quotes, converts. Mari Mari will try and we can offer prayers for his conversion and Mari's quick recovery. I had heard, and I don't know if this is true, that when they had subdued the attacker, what I'd heard, I don't know if this is true, that Bishop Mari put his hands on the attacker and forgave him and prayed for him. That's what I heard. 
maybe someone can all this stuff is like within the last few hours so but i did read that on twitter hopefully it's true because that's amazing and here's something else i was thinking about i don't know if any of us watching right now have ever been under a attack that is murderous maybe some of you have maybe if you've been in war or certain operations but here was an attack done in odium fidei, which is Latin for in hatred of the faith. So in order to be a martyr in the church, you have to be killed in odium fidei, all right, in hatred of the faith. So, for example, if, you know, I'm Taylor Marshall, I'm a Catholic, I'm walking out of Walmart and someone says, give me your money. You know, and they get nervous and, you know, or they purposely just shoot me and I die. You couldn't say, oh, he's a martyr because he was Catholic and he got killed. To be a martyr, the intention, the purpose of killing you has to be in hatred of the faith, in hatred of Jesus Christ. So it has to be more like, I want you to renounce Jesus or I'm going to take you out. And you say, I love Jesus Christ. I'm not going to renounce him. And then bam, you're gone. Now you're a martyr. Now you're a martyr. In Catholic and Orthodox theology, you go straight to heaven. No purification after death, no purgatory. You conformed your life perfectly to Jesus Christ by dying, by offering your whole life, right? By submitting to that death. What's interesting is, is Bishop Mari here, it's kind of a similar thing to St. John the Apostle, who's my confirmation saint. St. John the Apostle was, Tate was in Rome, and they put him into a vat of boiling oil to kill him, to torture him, to get him to renounce Jesus Christ, and he would not renounce Jesus Christ. They put him in the boiling oil, and then when they pulled him out, he didn't die. In fact, they said his skin was even fresher than before. He looked more youthful. And the church has always said that St. John is of the 12 apostles, the only one not to be a martyr. But in the old rite, it might be on the feast of St. John at the Lateran Gate, because the Lateran Gate is where he was thrown into boil, uh, boiling oil. I believe they use red vestments because, and I might be wrong about this, because he offered himself to be a martyr, even though the martyrdom didn't actually work. And here's kind of, I think, an analogy. Bishop Mari put himself out there and an act of martyrdom was performed against him. It's just that the switchblade didn't come open. So he was injured. He was hit with the handle. But by a miracle, the intervention of the Holy Ghost, I don't believe he was cut. It's amazing. Okay, a uh, dog-headed man says he's not a Nestorian. He has spoken to this. That makes me happy. That makes me happy. I've Googled around trying to get him to say on that. I've never seen him talk about it. So I would love if we could get a link or something like that so we could confirm that and put it to rest forever because when I looked up a few months ago and then again this morning, what jurisdiction, what church does... Bishop Mari Emanuel belonged to, it was the Assyrian Church of the East. And the Assyrian Church of the East is Nestorian. But I would love for it not to be that way. Um, let's do some more research. And if there's a video with Bishop Mari Emanuel explaining that, I would love to watch it. I've not been able to find it, but I would love to watch it. So thank you for that super chat, dog-headed man. I appreciate you. That's a big super chat. appreciate it. It's very kind of you. Uh, here we go. Uh, reminiscent of Romero. I think he's talking about uh, Oscar Romero, who was shot, gunned down, shot down in hatred of the faith. Um, Chris Knox says, Bishop Mari acknowledges Mary as mother of God. Cool. That's great. That would not, if he does, he's not Nestorian, which is fantastic. Uh, Antonio says, is he paralyzed or does he have any grave injuries? No. Um, the blade did not come out. 
So the guy thought he was going at him, but there was no, the blade did not fold out. So he was injured by the, by the trauma, the hitting, but I don't believe he was cut. Uh, Maria Santos says, can you comment on the five Orthodox martyrs just canonized? Unfortunately, Maria, I'm not familiar with that. I don't know. Are you talking about Eastern Catholics, Eastern Orthodox? I don't know who they are. Um, don't slander or gossip, verify and seek truth. Faustus, I just want you to know. I specifically spent a lot of time this morning chasing down Bishop Mari Emmanuel and his ecclesiastical jurisdiction. He does belong to one of the churches historically associated with Nestorianism. And I also found other websites saying that he belongs to the Nestorian Church of the East. So there's lots of information affirming all of these things. Again, if he has gone online and said, I'm not a Nestorian, I'm not a member of the Church of the East, or I do confess that Jesus is one divine person with the hypostatic union of two full natures, fully man, fully divine, um, that'd be great. I want that. I want that to be true. And you're hearing me say that. I want that to be true. I'm not trying to attack the man um, and belittle him, right? I'm trying to be, this whole show is trying to be gracious to him for crying out loud. Uh, here, Marlon says, hello from Houston, Texas. Awesome. Very good. Um, Carlisto Sixtino says, the problem of uncontrolled immigration that neither adapts nor respects, or respects makes these things possible. Greetings from Spain. Our Carlos friends from Spain. A salute to all of our Carlos friends. Uh, Tom Stolk says, I am Society of St. Pius V. You can rest assured there are gentlemen carrying underneath our suit coats. I'm sure these gentlemen know what to do. Different perspectives. Uh, John Perry says so many priests are being murdered in Africa. Yes, you see this every couple months. And I try to tweet about it, talk about it. We have to pray for the protection of our priests, our people. Um, people are saying the video that I tried to share earlier that had no sound that I would like you to watch, I would like to show it, but for some reason the sound is not coming through. The name of that video is called Satan Has Engulfed the Churches. Bishop Mari Emanuel Reacts to the Woke Pope. So he does have some references here to Pope Francis. Um, but it also, I think, shows his zeal, and he talks about how Christians need to wake up. Christians are kind of in a that hot, it's like a frog in the kettle or the hot pot, and they're just slowly turning up the heat. The heat is getting hot. And there are watchmen saying, hey, it's time to wake up. That's the message here. And I agree. I mean, that's one thing that I think Bishop Mari, Emmanuel, and I have in common. And that is we look around and we say, am I taking crazy pills here? Am I the only one seeing that we have an influx of people who believe and act differently to us? And over time, a short time, this is going to get uncomfortable and it's going to get dangerous. Am I taking crazy pills? Is Bishop Mari taking crazy pills? I mean, Bishop Strickland is one of the Catholic bishops who was talking like this, and then he got canned. He got fired by Francis. There it is. Lots of people commenting on whether Bishop Mari Emanuel is an historian or not. Again, I hope he's not. I don't want him to be. I'd love if there's a video with him explaining all that. And if you have that video, please post it in the comments below or in the chat. That would be really, really helpful. Chicago Big Dog says, wake up and save the children. Agreed. Agreed. Joey Olivo has shared the video that I wanted you guys to watch. 
So check that out. And maybe later on I can somehow get that video, embed it better instead of trying to do what I did before, which doesn't seem to work anymore, and uh, show it to you in another video because I think it would be really helpful. It's really good. Uh, by the way, I'm going to take a, a pause here and say if you'd like to, and there it is, the wrong video, the wrong screen again. If you'd like to move to a different part of the country where you have more conservative values, maybe you could find a traditional Latin mass, good conservative school, Catholic school, et cetera, schools, etc. I encourage you to check out realestateforlife.org. Realestateforlife.org are the people that I respect, the people that I think align with our values, and they will get you a, a real estate agent, people to help you move from where you are and move to where you want to go, right? So if you're in a blue state, you want to go to a red state, contact realestateforlife.org and they can help you. Realestateforlife.org. All right, back to our comments and questions. People are asking me, what do I believe about the mystic Luz de Maria? I don't know much about her. I've heard of her. I've never done a full study, so I don't want to, I'll refrain from saying anything. But uh, good question. Diane, no more violence, says, good afternoon, Dr. Marshall. I love your channel, but YouTube keeps unsubscribing me. Any ideas how to stop this? Thank you. You know, I hear this all the time. People get automatically unsubscribed. So I would just encourage you right now, Take a moment and see if you are subscribed to this channel. And if you aren't, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, you'll be notified. And while we're at it, there's uh, almost 3,000 people. Please like this video and please share it. A little controversial today. We're going to need those extra likes. So go ahead and hit the like button. Um, Dale, poor guy, Mar Mari is the loveliest of guys. Hope he's okay. And by the way, in the Church of the East and in the, I believe it's the Cyril Malabar Church, uh, they use the term Mar, M-A-R, and it's their title of respect. They also use it as a title for saints, right? So, his name, when he became a bishop, he took the name Mari, M-A-R-I, but his title is M-A-R, Mar. So he's Mar Mari. It's like if I, I would be Mar Marshall if I were in there, right? So Mar Marshall, Mar Mari. So Mar is his title. Mari is his name. Emmanuel, I'm guessing, is either a secondary name or it's his last name. I believe his birth name is Robert, by the way. <laughs> All right. So it's originally named Mar uh, Robert, but now he is Mar Mari or Bishop Mari Emmanuel. A lot of confusion on that as well when you Google and look him up and try to figure out what's going on. Is he dead? No, he made it. Right? The wet the the blade never came out. So he was he definitely got many strikes, if you watch it, to the that's the wrong one. Many strikes to the to his person, but he did not get cut because it's amazing. When I first saw it, I didn't know that. I was like, "Oh my goodness, this, he's going to be he's not going to make it." But he made it. Which is incredible. All right. Let's look at your Q&A. What would you do if this happened? Would you, let's just say there was a some kind of an attack like that. I would imagine some, it depends on all of it. I think some of the men would immediately need to work on protecting and moving children, especially, but women and children away from the situation. Okay, so Let's think through all this. You need some men who are going to have a protective role. 
right? That is opening doors, leading people to exits, right? And then you're going to also need some men who are going to actually have to engage in the scenario. This actually happened at our traditional Latin mass in the last year. Father was celebrating the traditional mass on the altar. He was past the offertory. I believe he was in the canon. I can't remember if he had gotten to the consecration or not. Through one of the fire doors, a Protestant man, evangelical, barges in, comes up to the altar area and starts yelling at everyone there that they're going to hell, that they worship Mary, etc. Right? So he thought this would be a good opportunity to preach at Catholics and condemn them to hell. And what happened is several men came forward, grabbed him, and took him out the side door. So what they did is they immediately removed him from the space. That is key, right? Not only do you have to get him and make him harmless, especially to the, the priest and the children and all that, but you need to just get him out because you don't know what else he has on him. Got to get him out. What's great is, by the guidance of the Holy Ghost, there was a police officer outside the church listening on the loudspeaker to the mass because the police officer was Catholic. So he just rolled up next to the Catholic church. He heard some, heard the Latin mass go, and he was just sitting there listening. Suddenly he sees men tumbling out of the side door of the church with a man, and he comes out and gets involved. So I, churches need to talk about this. Pastors need to talk about it. They need to get a security team. Joey Olivo, by the way, who's moderating the comments right now, I did a YouTube video with him. He is an expert on church security and putting a plan together and has written plans, and he has helped pastors and men all over the world assemble plans for altercations. You want to have the plan first. You want to have the plan months ahead of time. Can't think it up as you go. And you need people who are going to protect and you need people who are going to intervene. All right. Serena says, please, Muslims, if you don't respect Christian countries and don't respect Christianity, then you shouldn't come here as refugees. Go to Saudi Arabia, go to Iran, or go to the Emirates. You see, Serena, here's the problem. If you believe in infiltration, I wrote a book on it. Part of the infiltration, part of the agenda is to undermine Christian identity. So they're going to lead them to Christian regions, Christian geographies. It's part of the plan, right? So us saying, dear Muslims, please, if you do not respect our Christian morality and teachings, please go to a Muslim country instead. That's never going to happen, right? That's thinking like you are a nice Christian woman, which is what you should be. Fantastic props to you. That ain't going to work with all the overlords at the UN and the EU and United States Senate and the Congress and the judges. And then add into that all the billionaires who are pulling the puppet strings on all these politicians. They have a different agenda. And us saying, would you please, instead of exiting onto the Christian nation off-ramp, please exit off the Muslim nation off-ramp. They're not going to do that. Not going to do that. It's all by a plan. It's all by design. Yeah, here we go. Love, laugh, live. Maggie says, it's all by design. There you go. It's planned out. They wrote it down. Elizabeth Jones says, I would also protect my pastor. I think we need to take a moment here and say, what's really the role here of men and women? I know I'm an old-fashioned person. I actually believe men should open the door for women. I believe that men should protect women. I don't think it's the role of the woman to protect the pastor. But I appreciate it. Here 
Here we go. Oh, and by the way, the attacker said the reason I attacked him is because he speaks out against Islam. Bishop Mari Emanuel is probably is the most popular Christian on YouTube speaking against Islam. Aramean says a 16-year-old Muslim from Lebanon attacked the Bishop Mari, Mari with a knife during the liturgy. Bishop Mar, Mar Mari is very seriously injured. Yes, he is injured. He did go to the hospital. He's already made a statement. He's praying for his attacker. He's forgiven his attacker, um, but he was spared by the miracle of the blade not coming out. All right. Julia Ibrahim says, please pray for the Christians of Lebanon. We should. We need to pray for all of our brothers and sisters in Lebanon, Syria, all of these places. I remember meeting with many Assyrian Christians, Iraqis in Michigan, and it, what was amazing at talking to them, and by the way, some of them say they watch, so salute to all of our Christians in Michigan from the Middle East. Almost all of them had a martyr in living memory in their family. Like my uncle was martyred, right? My grandfather was martyred. My brother-in-law was martyred. And I heard some horrible stories of what happened to these Christians in Iraq. They fled. They came to America. Really nice people. We were at a beautiful, I guess it was an Iraqi restaurant. I don't know. But they said, all right, well, let's pray. And I said, well, hold on. I, I want to hear y'all do your, like, traditional prayer in, like, Aramaic. And they're like, no, nah, it's really long. And I was like, no, no, please do it. And they did their prayer in the traditional Aramaic, and it was long, but it was beautiful. And after it was over, they said, let me tell you what happened is in our tradition, we have the formula of blessing the food, but then we pray for every person at the table by name. And we prayed for you by name. And I was like, what a beautiful tradition, beautiful culture, full of martyrs. And by the way, I think we also should take this moment to say that you know, one of the reasons why Bishop Mar Mari Emanuel was attacked is because he is a visible Christian pastor, bishop, influencer. Don't love the term influencer. It's kind of dumb, kind of lame. People call me a influencer. He was attacked for that. And you're going to see, I think, more people, sadly, attacked. This is why there's a lot of influencers who have to go around with security teams. Sport Prime says, don't forget the Christian Catholics in Nigeria. 100% Christians in Nigeria under major attack. God bless them. Going into your comments here, question, lots of good ones. Mean Mustard said, Mean Mr. Mustard, as a layman, we have a duty to protect our clerics. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think it was St. Aidan or Alban. I can't remember. English saint. And they were coming to look for the priest. They were going to kill the priest. I think he's the first martyr of England. Help me out here. Was it St. Aidan or St. Alban? Can't remember. And he switched clothes with the, he said, Hey, give me your clothes. He switched clothes with the priest. So when they found him, they took him instead, like, Oh, that's the priest. And they took him. There's an example of a layman sacrificing himself to preserve the priest. Another time that happened was in the, uh, what was that? The English, during the English so called Reformation under Queen Elizabeth many lay people were hiding priests in what they call priest holes. And in their homes, they would break out little places like behind the staircase or under the fireplace, these little spots. So if the authorities came looking for a Catholic priest, they could hide them into these priest holes. They would come through the house. They would look around. You know, are you hiding any priests, any refugees in here? No. Okay, you're clear. Or they might find them, right? And sometimes if you were caught, Hiding a Catholic priest, you would be hung, drawn, and quartered. Facts. Oh, 
All right. Uh, Marion Alvar or Mar yeah, Marion Alvarez says we need the Knights of Templar back in this day and age. I don't know. I mean, maybe we just need something new. You know? Maybe a knight order. I don't know, maybe we bring it back. I don't know. I don't see I don't see Pope Francis wanting to bring that back. Um, but I don't know, but we need something. Like we have to get serious about this. And it would be helpful if bishops and priests and popes, cardinals could begin to talk about this and what is what kind of a solution we have. Uh, Michael Velosa says, Priest holds Edmund Campion. Yes, read the book Edmund Campion by Evelyn Waugh. Beautiful book. Beautiful. It helped me convert to Catholicism when I read it. Off topic, what's your favorite Christian film? Uh, it's The Passion. Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ is my favorite film. I also like Alfred Hitchcock's I Confess. Classic. Uh classic Hitchcock film, very Catholic plot centers on the seal of confession and a murder. Very good. What other films are like? I like the old 10 commandments, Charlton Heston, great film. What else? Yeah. I'd say those are my probably top three and they're classics. Can't argue with the classics. I'd like to get in to filmmaking. It's one of my goals. I'd love to make my book Sword and Serpent into a feature-length film. Be fantastic. Oh, good. Here we go. Uh, Angela Gradoni says it was St. Alban. Very good. I wasn't sure if it was St. Aidan or St. Alban. It was St. Alban who exchanged his clothes with a priest. Thank you so much. See, I have the most intelligent, high-info audience on the Internet. Y'all are great. Love you guys. You're smart. Tonight, by the way, I'm going to go see Bish. Uh, I'm going to go Bish. I'm going to go see Jordan Peterson tonight. He's going to be in Fort Worth, Texas. So I'm going to take my my dad and one of my sons. We're going to go hear what Jordan Peterson has to say. Of course, I don't agree with everything Jordan Peterson says. Obviously, if you watch this YouTube channel, sometimes I say, "Yeehaw." Jordan Peterson said this. He's right on the money. Sometimes I say, eh, Jordan Peterson said this. Wish he would have said this. Not quite, quite accurate. But he's a fascinating figure. So I'm going to go hear what he has to say in, in Texas tonight. Um, and if you're going tonight to see Jordan Peterson in Fort Worth, Texas, and you see me, say hello. Saved by Grace. Love your podcast, Dr. Marshall. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. Very kind of you. Up oh, here we go. St. Aidan was an Irish monk, not English. Yeah, so St. Alban was the English martyr. St. Aidan, I guess, is the Irish monk. I got him confused. I apologize. Rx says, Taylor Marshall, Christian Prince is an Arab Christian and a longtime expert on Islam. I'd love to learn more. I don't think I've heard of him. Um, also, uh, you know, I like to say this, wouldn't it be great if all of these heresies, all of these schisms were healed? What if we could all come together under all the ecumenical councils, under a holy pope who was a true man of God, who just exuded the river of life, the spiritual gifts, the Holy Spirit, who was a true vicar of Christ, who was a good shepherd, as we heard in the gospel on Sunday. And all of us were united, so there were, there were no evangelicals or Protestants. There was no Nestorians or, you know, the Russian Orthodox weren't divided from the Greek Orthodox, you know, and there weren't the Oriental Orthodox and the Armenian Orthodox and the Coptic Orthodox and the Ethiopian Orthodox. And then... All of these groups, what if we were all united? Every baptized person were truly in a universal church, Catholic. Now, there is one Catholic church. 
We have some scandals. We have some problems going on on it. All would need to unite with the one Catholic Church. I'm not saying that everyone altogether is the Catholic Church. I'm saying the Catholic Church is the Catholic Church, period. Wouldn't it be great if we could get all the heretics, all the schismatics, right? All of them. And they all came into union with the one true church. I think we should pray for that. All right. In order to pray for that, we'll do, we'll pray the Our Father that all people are united in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, subject to the Roman pontiff. Oremus nomini patris et fidei spiritus sancti. Amen. Pater noster, qui es in celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, secut in cello et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, secut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos malo. Amen. And Almighty God, we pray for... Bishop Mari Emmanuel, we ask that you would heal him of his wounds, that you would encourage him, that you would bring him into full communion and full orthodoxy with the one true Catholic and apostolic church. We ask that you would give us the graces to be prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice of martyrdom to the praise and the glory and honor of the name of Jesus Christ. It's the highest thing that we can return to you in our gratitude for saving us through the blood of Jesus on the cross. We ask you to bless us this week. Keep us in the Easter glory of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we pray in his glorious name. Amen. Nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I'd also like to encourage, if you want to support this podcast, you want to support me, go to Dr. Taylor, or sorry, patreon.com forward slash Dr. Taylor Marshall. Patreon.com forward slash Dr. Taylor Marshall. I'll send you some signed things, some rosaries, etc. So, and thanks to all the Patreon patrons that are out there. You guys are great. Thank you so much for your support. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the Logos, the Son of God. He made you. He made you special, particular. You're in the image of God. You have dignity because you're in the image of God. And He's died on the cross for you. So if you're discouraged, if you're losing hope, if you're despairing, if you're going through a divorce, you're going through depression, you're go- you lost a loved one. He is the way, the truth, and life. He loves you. He has a plan for you. If you're still alive, he has a plan for you. So do not give up. Keep going. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ says, you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed. Pray the rosary every single day or you're not on the team. Till next time. Adios.